Another day, another baggy tea, and an absolute vibe. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Yeti Mary and today is the continuation, the part two, of me reacting and responding to your eco dilemmas. Thank you so much for joining in and also feel free to join in in the comments if you have any additional points to any of these dilemmas. I'm sure that will help out a lot of people. I've also left a link to a part one in the description so feel free to check that out as well. Now let's get into the dilemmas. <laughs> I don't know what this energy is but finger gun energy is Okay, buying foods in plastic that's on clearance versus buying food in paper and glass packaging. I see a lot of dilemmas related to different types of packaging and understandably so, that makes a lot of sense. I would say for this kind of situation, choosing things on clearance is actually also a pretty neat idea. It combats food waste, it also lets different types of supermarkets know that that's something that we're interested in. And buying foods that aren't in plastic packaging but instead uses glass or paper is also a great idea. So I would say honestly a little bit of both. A good thing to consider when looking at what kind of packaging is the most sustainable is also thinking about what type of recycling you have available near you. For instance, if you don't have glass recycling, glass is actually a really unsustainable material to use as packaging. The reason why glass can be considered a sustainable material in the first place is because it can be recycled indefinitely without losing quality and also it doesn't leak chemicals into your food and yada yada. But if you don't have access to glass recycling and thus the glass packaging you're buying will go to landfill, then glass is not really a sustainable option. So it all depends on what kind of recycling is available to you. But buying food on clearance is obviously also a great idea. Now, in my local supermarkets, I often end up having to buy something on clearance. If I cannot find it package free, I will see if I can find it on clearance instead. So I've had lots of issues finding, for instance, lettuce without plastic. So what I do instead if I'm going to buy lettuce is that I buy it in plastic, but on clearance instead. So using these different types of ways of purchasing goods as tools, and then you can pick and choose what is most appropriate in a certain situation. I hope that helps. Is it more sustainable to make your own clothes than to buy new clothes? That all depends on how the material, like how the fabric is produced. Because if the fabric is produced unsustainably or if the fabric is produced in sweatshops, then it's the same, I guess. But if you get secondhand fabric, if you upcycle things in your wardrobe, if you buy secondhand clothes and you make them into something new, obviously that's going to be more sustainable. But the impact of buying just fabric at a fabric store, again, also depends on how that piece is produced. Because sometimes you have the option of buying really good, organic, GOTS certified, like A plus fabric. And then of course that will be better than buying new clothes. But if the fabric is made in the same place where the clothes is made. But overall, making something yourself is oftentimes going to be more sustainable than buying it pre-made. Now when I posted this story like do you have any dilemmas I can react to? Ah, I think one of the most frequent questions I got was related to what is more sustainable? Buying package free conventional produce or buying organic produce wrapped in plastic? And I wanted to react to that but I didn't feel like I had time to do it in this video so I made an entirely different video all about that. So they'll be left down below as well. I needed more time to explain myself. So um, there's another video just for this. <laughs> like this is going to be a lot about packaging. Here's another one. Packaged vegan foods versus packaged free animal products. So overall, buying a product without animal products is going to be more sustainable and have a lower impact than buying a product with animal products. But overall, that is only because most animal products today is produced with factory farming and there's nothing sustainable about factory farming specifically. So in that case, buying the vegan thing, even if it's wrapped in plastic, will be more sustainable. Then we can talk about, for instance, do you have backyard chickens? Then those eggs will have a lower impact than buying a vegan egg replacement. Do you see how that can differ? A product is not inherently sustainable because it is vegan, but when it replaces a product from factory farming, then it definitely is. But like, there are nuances, I completely get it. But in terms of the dilemma, is the vegan packaged product more sustainable or more unsustainable than the unpackaged or minimally packaged animal product, I would still lean towards the vegan product. 
again, and I think I also said this in part one, but if it's only a plastic bag that stands between you and being plant-based, heck that plastic bag. Scared coming out as a vegetarian to my friends and family in fear of being a burden when visiting. Okay, so I get it, first of all. I completely get it. I made a video about like my story time going from a meat eater to a vegan for life, and it's a whole thing, but I definitely relate to these fears. What I did personally was that I tried to make myself as little of a burden as possible while also maintaining the goals that I set for myself, like going vegan. And um, so whenever I, and I still do this by the way, whenever I visit friends or family and they have to cook for me, I will do a couple of different things. First of all, I'll ask them if I could stop by early and help them cook. If they need any help, I would sort of go, you know, I don't eat meat, so I would love to come by early in the day and help you make something or bring something. That's something that I've been doing tons of times as well, just bringing my own vegan, or in your case, vegetarian dish. So that's not going to add on extra work for them. Um, so helping out in the kitchen yourself, bringing something from home, is something that's going to unburden the people but you can still maintain your ideals and what you want to do and how you want to eat. Although I know some people can be a little bit difficult about this stuff and will act as though just you being there is going to be a burden because you're now vegan or vegetarian and even though they didn't have to lift a finger to create vegan or vegetarian food for you because for instance you might have brought it yourself they're still gonna have the attitude and um, that's most likely because some people don't really understand. I still deal with this stuff and for the most part I just ignore it. I try to help other people out as much as I can but I also don't want to compromise my own ideals and goals to make other people feel more comfortable. Being a student on a tight budget but want to live sustainably. I see you. I started my zero waste experiment when I was still at university where I had very limited funds. Um, so I completely know what that means. Usually whenever we want to start living more sustainably, we look at all these products that we ideally should buy in order to achieve the sustainability. But that's not really how sustainable lifestyles work. So you don't have to go out and buy tons of new expensive products to achieve your sustainability goals. You can start by having a no buy month or generally just any type of shop stop. You can start implementing more plant-based meals. Lentils and beans is less expensive than meat, for instance. You can also start looking at the recycling options, compost options, all these things, they don't really require you to spend more money. Then there's secondhand shopping, pre-loved shopping, which tends to be less expensive than buying things from new. I remember when I started implementing these things, I found that I actually ended up having more money by the end of the month because there were so many things I didn't do anymore. By reducing my consumption of different things and by being mindful of what I was buying, I ended up with more money, which I could then put into the things that might be a little bit more costly. Like sometimes buying in bulk tends to be a little bit more expensive than buying the cheapest option in the supermarket. Sometimes the farmer's market is a little bit more expensive. Then I suddenly had money to do those things. But I also have a video about my budget and how I spend money as a zero waster. So if you want more information about this, I will leave that link down below. How to stay on a healthy vegan diet with others eating sweets and unhealthy stuff around you. Okay, so I might end up tapping into something a little bit personal here, but just hear me out. I have had a lot of eating troubles. <laughs> hey. And I also made a video about veganism and diet culture and how we sort of need to like drastically separate those two. And I would be very cautious, or at least I am in my own life, I'm very cautious about applying morality to food and labeling something as healthy or unhealthy because usually it's the amount of the things that you eat, the variety and the balance of it. So labeling all burgers as unhealthy and like a no-no food tends to have a bad effect on your mental health. Or, let me rephrase, it was detrimental to my mental health. So I completely understand that you want to stay on a good vegan diet. If what is meant by this is that it's very hard to be vegan because people around you eat meat or dairy products, etc., and you sort of start up to crave them because you see other people eat them, that's definitely another story, but if you're referring to like snacks or sweets or unhealthy stuff and wanting to stay on a healthy vegan diet, like you can have a vegan burger or vegan sweets once in a while. That's not a bad thing. It's, it doesn't make you an unhealthy vegan to have 
a couple of snacks once in a while. Honestly, I think that is what adds to having a balanced and healthy relationship with food, that you're able to do that once in a while. So if your friends are having burgers, then have a vegan burger. Or if your friends are buying snacks, then buy vegan snacks. <laughs> you can both buy things that are, you know, labeled vegan, but there are also tons of accidentally vegan foods and snacks that you can look into. So I don't really know if that was what you meant by this question, but I feel like that was what resonated sort of with me and I hope that it makes sense. Going out with someone who does not care about zero waste and loves meat. Dating someone who doesn't care about zero waste and loves meat is definitely a challenge. And Jens and I, we have tapped into this in our couples Q&As because when we started dating, he ate meat and I didn't. And I looked a lot into packaging and plastic and zero waste and he didn't. And I actually mentioned this question to him and I should have maybe brought him in, but he's at work right now. But what he said was that you're also completely unrelated to your values. If you don't want to compromise in a relationship, if you don't want to hear the other person out or do something because the other person feels good about it or has goals they want to achieve and you don't want to help them, that's kind of a dick move. I mean, true. So obviously people in a relationship are still their own individual entities and they have their own right to choose things. But if you really care about veganism and if you really care about zero waste and their partner has absolutely no interest in it, it doesn't really seem like there's a lot in common. Of course, this is coming from my own personal perspective. I would never just say to anyone, dump their ass. Mm. Like, you know best what you want and what is important in your relationship. I think it's just, for me at least, what happened to me over time when I started engaging in sustainability and plant-based eating specifically, was that I found that it mattered more to me than I thought it did. Or I evolved into a person where being plant-based or being low impact became a core part of my essential values, that it became a very important part of me. And I found out that while previously perhaps I didn't mind very much, I started minding a lot. And I don't think I could be with anyone who did not share these beliefs and values, but that is completely individual and every experience or perspective here is valid. If it was me, I would sit down with my partner and explain to them what's important or what's not, come up with a compromise. I think there's also definitely a big difference between having meat once in a while and loving meat, if that makes sense. You know, we can find annoying stereotypes and archetypes of people within the sustainability community as well. But one like stereotypical person that I just really cannot vibe with anymore is people where it's a personality trait of theirs that they love meat. I think that is so unattractive. <laughs> Personally, I just, I really, I don't know what to do with that because I don't have that, I don't feel that way about vegetables. <laughs> I am vegan because I want to have a lower impact and it just seems like a weird personality trait, almost like, honestly, like a bit of a coping mechanism that they have to cling on to this thing so much because people around them are criticizing it. But I would sit down, I'm just rambling at this point, I'm sorry. Um, I would sit down with my partner and explain to them what's important and like what I want. And just remember that it's okay to grow apart. It's also okay to find compromises so you can become a stronger couple together but if you end up feeling like your values have moved and now your values are different or you have new deal or you have new deal breakers it's also okay to vocalize that again not saying that it can never work a person who's into sustainability and a person who is really not of course it can but it does require work it does require communication especially like so much communication and being open with each other and understanding of each other. And if you don't feel like you have the mental capacity for that sort of work, then I would perhaps remove myself from the situation. Um, just, I don't, I don't know. Is this helpful? I, mm. See, we're tapping into something here where I come with my own baggage and personal experience and trauma. <laughs> so I don't know if this was helpful or out of line, I, 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 I can't say. Now this is also a packaging related issue and one that I both relate to myself and have seen people struggle with many times. Fine tofu, it's vegan, but it's in plastic. I have the utmost tofu privilege in the sense that I am able to buy tofu in glass jars and then reuse and recycle the jars. 
which is the option that I am going for. And I have seen tofu in glass several places. I would recommend looking in Asian or Middle Eastern supermarkets where it is often available. That's where I've found several options as well. I know there's also a Danish manufacturer of food that makes tofu in glass would come. So if you're a Dane, that's also an option. I think you can get it in most grocery stores, uh, like food ticks. Mm. Um, also, I have also seen tofu in bulk, which blows my mind completely. But if neither of these options are available to you, it's still okay, even if it comes in plastic. It's very unlikely that we can all be 100% completely plastic free. And reducing plastic is obviously important, but I would also recommend to looking at, okay, these options we can get plastic free, which would what we will do. And then we'll have these like core foods that we perhaps get, even though if they come in plastic. You can also look at other options if that is more available to you, other types of proteins as well, both lentils and beans, you can often get plastic free too. And that, everybody, was the dilemmas for this video. Thank you so much to everyone who sent in dilemmas. If you have any dilemmas, leave them down below. You can DM me on Instagram. I will, I guess, make another uh, little post where people can write. And so follow me on there to know when that happens and if you want me to respond to your dilemma react to it. I don't know. Trying to be helpful. I don't know if it works. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. That would absolutely make my day and you can like up this video if you thought it was good. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.